This is the FM Gold Channel of All India Radio Daily on 100.1 MHz. Please stand by for our next broadcast. This is All India Radio in the special program. Now we bring you an exclusive interview with Controller and Auditor General of India, Girish Chandra Murmu. Interviewer is AIR Special Correspondent, Moshimi Chakravarti. Established under Article 148 of the Indian Constitution, the Comptroller and Auditor General of India is the constitutional authority empowered to audit all receipts and expenses of the central government, the state governments, autonomous bodies, corporations and companies in which there are government equity shares. To talk about this very important work being done by the CAG, we today have with us the Comptroller and Auditor General of India, Shri Girish Chandra Murmu, who was appointed to this post on the 7th August 2020. Welcome to the All India Radio, sir. Thank you. We begin our first question. What is the role of the CAG as has been envisaged by the Indian Constitution? Also, could you briefly tell us the areas of audit work that is presently being done by your office? As in your opening remarks, you have already outlined that under the Constitution, Article 149, it confers the powers and responsibilities of audit on the Controller and Auditor General of India. It spells out that as may be prescribed by the law by parliament, the performance of duties and exercise of powers will be regulated. So accordingly, we draw our power from the constitutional provision as well as from the duties, powers and the conditions of services act passed by the parliament. And under these acts, we have also our own regulations which is revised from time to time on that basis we do. Broadly speaking, as you have pointed out in the beginning, we certify the accounts, we see the compliance of the rules and regulations and the standards of accounting and also the performance also in due course of time, this has also been added. Value for money audit, that is performance audit also is being taken up by say, the c and AG. So overall, not only see the accounts of the government, it is both union and the states also, or the local government. Also, we see the public sector undertakings and their performance also we audit. Currently, we have certain subjects which have been taken up, which affects the population at large in the pan-India basis. Particularly, we are seeing the programs like Aishman Bharat, also the Prime Minister's Awaj Yojana, also which is affecting the poorer section of the people like the scholarship schemes and also health infrastructure and the health management issues also. Apart from that, we prepare every year annual plan for the audit. Every state, they come out with a number of topics for conducting performance audit along with the compliance audit of certain subjects. Of course, the finalization of finance and appropriation accounts and the SFR are mandatory. These are done mandatorily every year, but certain topics which have got large impact or the risk is involved. Looking to the risk parameter, we select such topics also. So in such kind of work, do you ever get any kind of pressure from the government bodies or other functionaries on audit related issues? And how do you handle them if you do? The Constitution of India, which has provided the institution of, as a supreme audit institution, the CAG's organization is insulated from these kind of pressures. Hardly such any pressure come on us. In fact, the governments and the ministries and departments, they request us to carry out certain audit for certain subjects or certain topics or the programs they themselves. So I have not come across that kind of pressure. We are functioning independently as investors in the constitution. So many times it's been said that your reports are delayed because you don't get the required records or information in time. Is that true and how do you overcome this? We get these kind of instances which are exception rather than in general practice. Mostly the ministries, departments, government and the functionaries, they are very cooperative and they provide, they are very proactive in providing the records. In some cases, in a particular circumstances, this kind of things happen and we have certain mechanism apart from you know persuasion and kind of taking up with the authorities the ministries under the regulation we can escalate this kind of non-cooperation or the non-production of records to the 
हायर ऑफ इन द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एज वेल एज टू द लेजिस्लेचर सो दोज रेयर केसेस वेयर दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स हैपन वी हैंडल डिफरेंटली लुकिंग टू द एक्सीजेंसीज एंड द लोकल कंडीशन एंड द सर्कमस्टेंसेस नॉर्मली वी गेट ऑल द कोऑपरेशन यस समटाइम ड्यू टू द एक्सीजेंसीज सर्टेन इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड डिलेज और समकाइंड वी रेज सर्टेन क्वेरीज द रिप्लाइज कम्स लिटिल बिट डिलेड अदरवाइज वी आर एबल टू गेट द इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑफकोर्स देयर हैज बीन सम काइंड ऑफ एन डिस्कशन एमंग आवर सेल्स एंड वी आर थिंकिंग दैट द करंट डिस्पेंसेशन वे एन द आरटीआई एक्ट कैम द इंडिविजुअल कैन आस्क फॉर द इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम द अथॉरिटीज एंड देयर इज अ टाइम बाउंड मेनर द इन्फॉर्मेशन हैज टू बी प्रोवाइडेड टू हिम एंड इन केस ऑफ नॉन गिविंग अप और सप्लाइंग ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन ही कैन अप्रोच द हायर अप ऑन अपील इन सच सर्कमस्टेंस परहप्स दिस इज एन हाई टाइम दैट सम दिस काइंड ऑफ मैकेनिज्म कैन बी इवॉल्व बट राइट नाउ बिकॉज ऑफ द कोऑपरेशन वी डोंट सी दैट काइंड ऑफ एन एन रिक्वायरमेंट इमीडिएटली सर हैव द बीन इंस्टेंसेस at least reports say that there have been some where the reports that you present to say the president or the governor there is delay in tabling of them in the parliament or in the assembly under the constitution we are mandated to prepare the audited accounts and the reports whatever reports we prepare and submit it to the president or the governor the case may be and the governor or the president they cause the reports to be placed before the legislature of course in due course of time this has been delegated to the ministries so the whole reports goes and there are some local instances some time it happens that reports are not being led on time otherwise mostly it is being led on the current situation if i can tell you around 24 reports out of we have almost finalized 162 reports both the union government and the state government are yet to be led in the legislature So what would you do in these cases how do you pursue them so normally in the subsequent session they it is led we hope that it will be done there have been allegations that the cag as an institution goes beyond its mandate how much truth is there in this what is your thoughts see this is an opinion as it is very clear from our constitutional mandate as well as the act under which we perform our duties and functions it is very clear which are the aspects we are supposed to be seen normally we deal with the rules regulation provisions which is prescribed by the government or the executive or the policies framed by the government or the laws made by the parliament or the legislature against that we examine the performance of particular ministry or the department to see the legality propriety in some cases because of the procurement and other thing is the transparency aspects also subsequently we are also seeing the economy efficiency and the effectiveness how the policies are becoming effective or in not so effective or how efficiently it is being executed so within that parameter we see and whatever we our reports come they are all factual supported with evidence documents and supporting documents last level including vouchers and the invoices and whenever the accounting things are coming we see everything so we don't in my mind there is any way that we are going beyond the mandate it is all within the mandate so i don't see that this kind of allegations or the opinion as a any bias it is just an opinion if anybody has got this kind of opinion so has there been any decline in the number of reports that have been sent by the cag to the parliament and legislatures we have an on an average 150 reports we prepare every year including the state report and the union government report during the covid period also barring 2 3 years we had a problem in the beginning of the first wave of covid and the second wave of covid we had an that kind of setback but i am very happy to say that during the covid also we have performed well as a frontline department we have been proactive in handling the situation like other frontline worker during this time we could see that our people are vaccinated and they including their families and also that's how we have been able to perform our duties so far the accounts and entitlements are concerned like pensions and pf and also salaries and all those kind of and the finalization of the accounts etc we have been a very prompt able to do of course the compliance and the performance audit also this year we have almost come back to the normal numbers many see the cag and the cbi along with the cvc 
as a stumbling block in quick decision making in the government officers are said to keep stalling their decisions in fear of these bodies are there any kind of fears are these justified these fears and delays i think this is some kind of an you know unnecessary excuses or being circulated around we carry out our functions in a different assumptions unlike the cbi and cbc they have the function of post occurrence of certain things when something happens and there is some element of you know irregularities or some culpabilities there then they come in and we do a normal audit of the system audit the process audit and the veracity of the accounts and the accuracy and so that we can assure the parliament or the legislature that these accounts are accurate fair and as per the rules prescribed by the government it is done so this is part 1 in case of performance and other unless there is certain glaring thing coming up with the evidence we bring out and we give an recommendation only to rectify we give a positive recommendation seeing the leakages or some kind of non performance or some kind of inefficient performance or the policies and have not been translated into the action properly we bring out that kind of thing so that the executives can take corrective action and also legislature can enforce the accountability of the executives but how the responsibility will be fixed that is left to the executives only we only point out and we give the corrective recommendations so it is up to them so i feel it is and just some kind of an a uh, rumor i can say or an excuse that otherwise also those who are not prone to take decision they spread this kind of thing we saw the prime minister gracing audit divas in november 2021 has the government's response changed after the prime minister's acknowledging the positive contribution of the cag i will come to a little bit of the background of the audit divas as the under the government of india act 18 58 the consolidation of accounts from the all presidents scheme and the government of india finance ministry they brought out an notification how the budget would be prepared and the income and expenditure should be depicted on this the first time in the 16th november 1860 the cag's institution came into being so it is very old so we thought of that in the 75th year of independence this is a befitting time to celebrate audit divas and we are very fortunate the honorable prime minister came and graced the occasion and during the his lecture or the his address to our officers which is telecast across the country virtual mode and those who are present also in the our premises all the officers who are there and but and all other staff across the country were also connected got benefit of the prime minister's vision and prime minister's idea of audit and the expectations also he recognized our efforts and initiatives what we are doing at a new areas like audit of the sdgs the natural resources accounting kind of a thing and also use of technology like remote sensing and gps technology to strengthen our the audit and our training efforts etc this has translated into a multiplier effect in the states also subsequently we had in the all states they did something kind of an audit week where in madhya pradesh the chief minister also came in other places other dignitaries also have come and this has generated lot of positive environment for us as you asked me in the first question some here that how the cooperation from the auditors are there definitely this is a good signal and we are getting good response also so this is very encouraging for us and for our entire officers and the staff in the audit department so this is how this is a very good occasion for us with the emphasis on public private partnership and the privatization that we see is happening do you think the audit ambit of the cag is shrinking and also how do you plan to audit the areas that go into the private sector will you also be auditing the huge government fundings to the startups as per the constitutional mandate as it is it is a certification or seeing the accuracy and fairness of the government accounts 
maybe the state or the union government that was the original mandate which was in a colonial era mandate it was there in due course of time with the passage of the dpc act and the regulations and also different pronouncement of the court particularly honorable supreme court in 2014 we got much more scope to go into the audit of this kind of institution also basically wherever the public fund flows either directly or indirectly we have some authority under the dpc act to look into this kind of expenditure or also resources where it is being used sometimes resources are used by the private people on the authority of the government but normally they are out of the ambit of the public audit by the cndg because they only draw the resources but they function separately similarly there are certain grants flows to the parastatal kind of people but they nevertheless fund flows so we see the basic policies rules and regulations and the parameters under which the ministry or the government is providing this kind of the fund because public fund has to be accounted some year so in that way we get into the audit but directly this kind of situation is there where we don't have in many places don't have that kind of an authority to go because they are private organizations but we have got this kind of indirectly wherever the fund flows wherever the contracts are there how the contracts are been carried out and performance of the contract etc we can see what would be the cag's suggestion to bridge the gaps between government policy and implementation keeping the constitutional mandate in mind public audit is an integral instrument of an public administration it is definitely is adding to the good governance because it promotes accountability propriety and the legality see the rules and regulations are properly implemented as prescribed by the executives or as the laws made by the legislature are literally or in spirit they are carried out we give wherever the audit brings out we bring out in our report and through different committees in the parliament or in the state government the legislature enforces the accountability of the executives in this regard that adds good governance and because the performance audit or the value for money audit has been carried out so it gives how the project schemes programs are being executed and implemented this is definitely leads to the improvement of administration implementation of the schemes projects and also benefits the population at large so that way we are here as i said that our our corrective recommendations it is not a merely a fault finding mission what it is being depicted it is an corrective systemic audit and also to see that how the efficiency or the effectiveness of the government programs and the policies will come so that's how it is an add to the administration and to add to the executive performance the accounting standards are very old they were set in 1974 successive finance commissions have suggested reforms in this area particularly personal finance management cag is a vital pillar in this what are the constraints in moving forward and how can this be bridged to bring in greater transparency accuracy and accountability in india's accounting standards if the government follows the cash based accounting standards basically it is the income and expenditure the budget depicts this kind of a thing it is not on the accrual basis or the double entry book keeping system and mostly the globally varying few maybe the minuscule this system is there there is the cash based accounting system is there so it is mostly people say that it is prescribed for the internal monitoring of the ministries and the government and nothing much has happened so we had tried in 2000 to i think with our initiative government appointed one government accounting standard board to look into it is an multi member committee drawing people from different ministries as well from the outside also to see how the accounts can be improved and in the as you said the successive finance commissions also particularly i think 12th finance commission had talked about the accrual best accounting system accordingly the 
government accounting standard board prescribe few cash based accounting standards to the government out of them few have been already implemented similarly there are accounting standards for the pris after the 73rd 74th constitutional amendment all the local bodies the transferred activities took place the certain ministries and the departments were transferred to the local level so the accounting standards for the pris and for the municipalities in the municipal corporations were prescribed mostly in the municipalities urban local bodies it is the double entry book keeping system but in the many places it is the same cash based accounting system so these are constantly being reviewed and we as mandate in the constitution under article 150 the formats of accounting has to be prescribed by the president or the governor in consultation or after consultation with the cndg so we play a very crucial role and we prepare this kind of standards also we see the global practices we are part of the global community of auditors that the supreme audit institutions are there we have an international organization the intosci kind of a thing so we see their accounting standard also we also try to follow certain accounting standards so this is an work in progress so it goes on so like you said successive finance commissions have pointed out that accounting and audit of local bodies remain a huge problem to make the local body finances more robust what would be your suggestion sir as it is prescribed under the law that the local bodies under the purview of the local government the state government they are supposed to prescribe the standards and account in not accounting basically of the paraphernalia for the auditing but fortunately we have because of the dpc act and the various mous we have signed with the various state governments we have the authority to handhold the local fund examiners or the local fund auditors every state has to strengthen them supervise their activities and very recently we have taken it up during the audit divas we had a very weak seminar and in the our audit advisory board we have constituted with the eminent people from outside their suggestion with their help we have taken an initiative to carry out very wide scale consultation with the stakeholders state governments and see that the accounting standards are maintained and how to strengthen their accounting activities we are trying to brainstorm because panchayats are not so well to do and they are both in terms of fund and in terms of manpower they are not so very happy position in such situation how to carry out their audit we are prescribing and also we are conducting this year throughout the country certain local bodies including arwan and the rural local bodies audit we are taking it up along with the delpas that is the department of local fund auditors so would you also suggest that some functional changes are required in the office of the cag because cag also has been a body around for quite some time now recently we had in 2020 21 we had an taken up some restructuring kind of an initiative aligning with the vertical whatever situation or the you can say the vertical alignment of the departments and the ministries we try to align our audit team also accordingly so we saw to that there will be you know sectoral kind of a thing like general and social services ministries are clubbed together and the economic sectors or the infrastructure or energy sector they are clubbed together along with their other boards and corporations should also be clubbed together so that the overall picture comes if somebody else does an audit of the psu or or the board under a particular ministry and ministry is done by another team then there will be you know overall picture will not come out so accordingly we try to vertically align so in keeping up the time and looking into the now it revolution most of the government functions are you know now been transiting to the it platform especially the dbts and also the public finance management tools which the cga the controller general of accounts does this accounting fund flow and resource flow etc are being done online so we are also trying to synchronize with that kind of an audit so we are also emphasizing on it audit kind of a thing 
have you ever thought of auditing your own reports that have you ever seen how they have benefited the country so these are two parts we do the administrative audit of our office also we have an inspection wing entire vertical they do both administrative audit as well as the technical audit of the particular office how they are following the audit standards audit practices processes that is one also we have got a peer review by the international audit bodies particularly by a third country some other countries audit like a cag organization they can also look into the our audit processes last such exercise was done in sometime in 2011 12 now it is high time we are also preparing for that kind of peer audit from outside so this then the second part is how effective as i said we prepare accounts and appropriation accounts and the finance account and regularly we give it and it is regularly discussed in the parliament when or the legislature also the compliance audits and the performance audits come once it is placed in the parliament and the legislature it comes to the public domain it is put on the website also and we are now trying to have some kind of an audit week like the vigilance week along with our audit divas and to have a large scale consultation with the stakeholders public at large also the interested parties to get how the effect is there or what kind of suggestions also they can give us to improve our audit or the topics which we take up during our audit we can also think of how to involve the public participation in identifying that kind of issues also so far effect is there effectiveness what is you are asking me is that it is the executive we are supposed to be accountable to the legislature they take it seriously when it comes into the public domain and when it is being discussed it definitely get traction and the attention of the people apart from that which are not discussed also the action taken report are collected the all ministries wherever such observations are there the action taken reports are monitored in consultation with the cag so the ministries and departments they have to take note of the audit objections or the audit suggestions and carry out whatever the corrective actions are there and wherever it is not possible they are supposed to give it when it is it cannot be complied or some modification required under the action taken report which is monitored by the ministry of finance the last question which is related to what you have just said is there any way to involve the public in your audit work take in their inputs and the views that you have thought of right now also there is some kind of consultation every state ag have their audit advisory board it is constituted with the eminent people from to the government and from the other organizations and their suggestions are taken care and also media also plays a role whenever certain issues come up also the individual sometimes they also bring to the notice of the concerned ags so they try to include in their annual audit plan all such topics which are publicly relevant which have got much risk is involved or much public importance is involved in that kind of topics are also selected now we are trying to formalize it through the audit divas to make it more broad based so that apart from the stakeholders consultation advisory boards suggestions how we can involve the public and at large through seminars through other activities and also we are trying to publish the good practices or the things where our audit has brought out some process change systemic change or where the government have accepted certain recommendations and where it has resulted into the savings of the government money or or the better efficient use of the money that kind of topics are also now you are bringing out in the publication so that way it should be able to reach the public thank you so much for sparing your time and enlightening us the listeners of all india radio on the entire gamut of issues relating to the cag thank you you were listening to an exclusive interview with controller and auditor general of india Girish Chandra Murmu interviewer was AIR special correspondent Moshimi Chakraborty this program was produced and presented by the news services division of all india radio you can listen to it on our mobile app news on air this program is also available on our youtube channel news on air official you may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks@gmail.com
That program was broadcast from AIRFM Gold of Delhi. Time now, a few seconds to 10 p.m.